on today's Maker Mashup, part one of our robotic arm 3D printer. On today's video, we're going to be covering the mostly printed Scara arm. And what that is, is a 3D printer robotic arm. And you can see here, this moves along here. And what this is, is a robotic arm, which has been fashioned with a 3D printer nozzle. And our end goal is to be able to do 3D prints with a robotic arm. Now you may have seen these type of printers come up in the marketplace. I've seen a few of them, but they're really not very commonplace right now. Uh, you see a lot of Cartesian printers some Deltas. I haven't seen a lot of these, so I was really excited and wanted to do a build on one of these. I did find this on Thingiverse, so this is something that was completely done and all I had to do was print the models and I've included links for that in the description. So today we're going to be working on doing a lot of the mechanics, getting it all put together and then in future videos we're going to do some 3D printing with it. So make sure you subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss our next episode covering this particular 3D printer. So with that, let's get to work. So now we're going to want to insert the rods into the base. And each one of these goes directly in. They should fit snugly as you push these into your base. Okay, for this step, we're going to need some M3, and these are eight millimeters. We're going to need some M3s that are six millimeters, and then this M3 50 millimeter. We're also going to need one stepper, and then we're going to need this base plate. So this plate indicates here at the bottom which direction the wires need to go. Now we're just going to tighten these up. I like doing them across so that way we get a good solid base and everything tightens up evenly. This 50 millimeter goes in the base. And these go right in the end. And we're ready for the next step. We're going to slide this part down and we're in good shape there. Okay, so here's another section that I'm going to deviate from a little bit here. This one's a bit more important. The original design here calls for what's called a threaded rod. And you can see here, this is just a nut on a rod. And the way this is designed to work is that it's going to hold the nut into place there. These are really not designed for linear motion. While they work, they're not optimal for linear motion. And this is going to control our Z axis. So what I'm going to do here is use a very traditional Z axis rod. And we're just going to go ahead and use one of these. The problem that I've got here is that this is just a hair shot. So we're going to see if we can file out enough of this. And then what we'll do is we'll drill holes here to hold this in place. We weren't able to file this down just up here. So what I did is I just took the drill here and I hit this real quick to open it up just a hair more. And then once I've done that, then I just hit it again with a file. So now I can go in here and presto, this fits perfectly. So this here is a two and a half millimeter bit. So this is slightly smaller than a three and that way the threads have something to bite into with the plastic. And because I used that M2.5, it's gripping right into that plastic very well. All right, and we're good to go. So now we're gonna attach the stepper here. Now, again, this indicates the direction of the wires. So we wanna make sure that we're pointing it out that direction. Now that we have that done, we're gonna attach our wires here. And now another deviation I did is instead of the plastic printed bearings, I went ahead and got some linear bearings. And these links are in the description. So we're just gonna snap these in place. There we go. So now we're attaching the timing gear. So now we're gonna go ahead and prepare the lower control arm. So I've got a couple of M3 nuts that we're gonna put into the lower arm here. And then we've also got these gears and the arm both of which are gonna get these bearings. Now, these bearings sit within here, 
So I've already gone ahead and cleaned these up with a file on the inside. So we can just take the bearings and they drop in place like this. I'm gonna slide the lower control arm on. Once the control arm is in place, we're gonna slide in spacer gear. This is the smaller of the two. We're gonna slide on the other bearing. And then the other spacer gear. Now with the timing belt, once we get this on here, we're gonna to wanna to slide this on over our gear. Okay, so now we're ready for our upper arm assembly. So this one is pretty straightforward. Again, you're gonna to wanna to sand inside here with your file or some sandpaper just to smooth it out and make sure it's ready for these bearings. The large bearing slides right into here. We're gonna push that one right in there. And then the skateboard bearings, these fit in there. And there's a little lip inside here. So when you sand this down, if you can see there, there's a lip on the inside. And that particular lip that's in there and it's right, it's right there. If you see that lip, you don't want to sand that part down. Now, the reason being is that these skateboard bearings are stopped by that little bit of extrusion that's there. So there's that piece there. And then all that we're going to do is drop these screws into the top. So now we're going to attach the upper assembly. So there you go, a little bit of filing right around there, and that went right into place. Now that we have that in place, we're gonna drop in our screws. Okay, so the next step here, we're gonna attach the stepper to the top plate. So this is gonna require us to use the M3 eight millimeter nut, uh, screws here, and then this is a pancake stepper. So what they asked, uh, you probably could have used a regular size one, but I think they probably did this for the weight concern, is that this pancake stepper be the one that's on the top. And this was a stepper I was able to pick up for only like $10 off Amazon. And I'll have a link for this in the description. So we're gonna use this one and attach that onto here. The other thing that we're going to do here, too, is we're going to leave this side open. Now, the directions call to put a nut in here, but since we're using our lead screw, there's really no need to have anything here. So we're going to leave this part open. And for this step of the process, you're going to want to put these screws in, but you're not going to want to tighten them. You're going to want to make sure that it's loose because you're going to have to adjust that final belt. All right, so it moves. So now we're gonna go ahead and put our timing gear on here. All right, we're ready to move on to assembly. All right, so we're ready for our final assembly piece. What we're gonna need to do here is we're gonna attach our belt and that's gonna hook to this stepper here. And uh, this is just gonna slide on the top of here. And then we're gonna go ahead and use these screws that go here and here, and that holds the assembly in place. All right, now you can see here, this is very crooked here. So we're gonna have to recess this back on the stepper. So we're gonna take it off and we wanna make sure that this is parallel just like this one. So we wanna make sure that we adjust that. Okay, now that we have the carriage assembled, now we're just gonna drop these M350s through and we're gonna tighten them up. And you want to be careful here to make sure that we're not over tightening. You don't want to have warping on these parts here. Okay, so once you're done, then you're going to slide this entire assembly. And we have ourselves the mechanical assembly of our scara arm. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is work on the electronics. All right, so moving on with the electronics here, what we're gonna do is attach the Z end stop, and I've included links for these in the description.
So now we're gonna attach the X and Y end stops. Uh, you can see here, I've 3D printed this. Uh, it doesn't come out very well. The 3D print does indicate, however, which way the wire directions need to go. That's probably the most important thing here. Uh, all of these connect with a screw and a nut on the other side. So this just slides on here. And you've got to be really careful with this because this is not the best way to handle this. All right, so we've got that on there. Now we're going to attach the first end stop. Okay, so I was able to attach the end stops. This was supposed to go through here. It didn't fit very well. And plus, I don't know if these cheap Chinese end stops that I bought uh, were drilled to spec. So anyhow, I was able to use some shorter screws, get this to attach, so this is on there. This one, however, was not working well at all. I had the same problem here. These lines did not line up, uh, the holes did not line up. So I went ahead and drilled another hole there, put these in, but both end stops are now working. Now, the key here is to position this arm when it swings around, so that way it hits both end stops. And this is key, so you need to hit the first end stop but you can see here I'm missing the second end stop so to make this align properly I have to hit this end stop and then this needs to hit that end stop okay so we're going to talk about the motherboard here what I had to do is I had to ditch the SKR and install an MKS Gen L. now the reason why is because what happened was I had put the SKR in place here, I got everything running and got the firmware loaded. However, the firmware that is in default Marlin did not work. It would not home properly and I had all sorts of issues. So what I ended up having to do was to go back to the 16-bit world here and run an older version. This is actually running the version that came with the models on Thingiverse which is actually a Marlin 1.4. So this is an old MKS Gen L board. It does work just fine. Everything here is functioning properly and I'm able to get the printer to home now. The next step here is I'm going to have to now redo all the wire management. The other thing I did here too was these are now pancake steppers that I've got in here because the weight was too much on here. I had to increase the V-Ref on these just a little bit to get enough torque uh, to use the lead screw. So a little bit of complications here, but we were able to get it working and I've now got it to home. So the next step that I'm going to do here now that I've got this done is I'm going to do the wire management. The other piece I'm going to do here is get the nozzle in place. I've already put into place here the uh, stepper for the extruder and this will run a Bowden tube over to the end over here where I'll put the nozzle. So those are our next steps. We're going to go ahead and install the nozzle. Now, I do like how this is adjustable here. My only concern is whether or not this will be able to hold up once we start printing with it. All right, so let's go ahead and get our nozzle on there. This just slides in like this, and I've already put the screw back there. All right, so we're just going to finish screwing this in, and this will put the nozzle in the right place. Now what I've done here is I've put a volcano nozzle on here because my plan is to just use this for quick displays at the Maker Fair. And since this will be at the Maker Fair, I want to be able to print things pretty quickly. So we put a 1.2 millimeter nozzle here and that's what we're going to use for our 3D printing. Okay, so I think we've got everything hooked up here now. I'm just going to go over what I finally settled on was that the wires are going through the center here. This was too much of a, a bend for the Bowden to go through here. So we put that through the end stop that we printed here and that goes down there. And the Bowden now is uh, shorter than the original one that they had in their description. And then what I've done here is I've uh, put together just a build plate. Um, it's just a, a build tack type surface. Uh, that's glued down here and now what I'm going to do is mount this arm and we're going to then go ahead and start doing some printing. 
Okay, so we've got everything put together here. I've got to mount some of these electronics, but other than that, the printer is mounted and secured here. I've got the build plate all ready. Uh, we're really ready to start doing our 3D printing. Now, I'm gonna be covering that in our next video because there are a lot of steps that they had and some file conversions that needed to take place. So from what I'm reading, I'm gonna have to make some conversions of the G-code in order to work with the Scara arm. So we're gonna cover that in our next video. So make sure you subscribe so that way you don't miss that next video. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it and share it with your friends. I would love to hear about anyone else that's put together one of these Scara 3D printer builds. Uh, I'm really looking forward to taking it this weekend to the Wisconsin Maker Fair in Madison. So we'll be there. And if you happen to see this video and want to stop by the booth to check out the robotic arm, please feel free. So with that, I'm going to say that's it for today's video. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.